Now, business time uh, on the programme. We're starting in the UK, Charles, with uh, Keir Starmer's Labour government. It's going to be unveiling its budget to Parliament this Wednesday. All eyes are really going to be on the Chancellor of the Exchequer, uh, Rachel Reed. That's right, Stuart. Uh, that's, uh, for those who don't know, the title of the UK Finance Minister. She's actually the first ever woman to hold that position, which has existed for 800 years. And since Labour won the general election in July, she spent a lot of time warning about the dire financial situation the UK finds itself in. Last year, the government spent £120 billion uh, pounds more than it, collected, than it collected, meaning its budget de deficit was worth 4.4% of GDP, the country's 18th largest since 1948. Uh, but her tone has changed in the lead-up to this Wednesday. She's now uh, looking to the future and is promising to, quote, invest, 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 saying that her belief in Britain burns brighter than ever. So it means we can expect a lot more spending then in today's budget? Yeah, in line with uh, Labour's manifesto and traditions, something we haven't seen uh, in 14 years and seven months. That's the last time a Labour government unveiled a budget. We'll get clearer figures on exactly how much the government is looking to spend during Reeves' presentation. Uh, but media reports and official briefings have already given us clues as to what will come. Minimum wage is expected to be increased by as much as 6.7% uh, next year, providing relief for the lowest paid uh, workers, although still a bit short of the living wage of £12.60 uh, an hour. That's as calculated by the uh, Living Wage Foundation. And budget increases are expected for the uh, National Health Service to buy new equipment and cut hospital waiting lists uh, for defense spending and uh, for education. Uh, with a £1.4 billion fund to rebuild classrooms. Big question, I suppose, is how does the government plan on uh, paying for these spending increases and filling the gap in the deficit? Well, there uh, should be some uh, spending cuts, uh, but the main effort will come in the form of tax increases. Labour has pledged not to increase taxes for working class and middle class people, so we shouldn't expect increases in income tax, in value-added tax, or uh, employee contributions to national insurance, which is uh, basically social security. Instead, we can expect employers to pay more for national insurance, uh, uh, and we can expect more revenue to come from inheritance tax, either by increasing its rate or tackling uh, various exemptions from it. And the Labour government has also decided on a new way to calculate the country's national debt, which would enable it to borrow an extra £50 billion, pounds, which they would be able to dedicate to uh, infrastructure. Various trade and employer groups have criticized these plans, saying this will make hiring uh, new people more difficult for them. Uh, employee unions, though, support the increase in minimum wage, arguing that employers are able to absorb the extra cost. This will no doubt be uh, questioned by the Conservative Party, which will be sitting on the opposition benches and represented for the last uh, time by uh, former Prime Minister Rishi Sunak before a new party leader is chosen this weekend. All that to come later in the day. Let's move to the markets uh, then. What's the picture of the Open in Europe? All uh, major bourses uh, in the red. Uh, investors in London obviously keeping an eye on that government budget presentation. Expected to start, start around 12.30 p.m. local time. You can see in the meantime the FTSE opening down one half of a percent lower. In France, uh, the CAC 40 down three quarters of a percent uh, lower in spite of growth in the third quarter. Uh, having accelerated by 0.4% above estimates because of the impact of the Olympic Games. The big item on the agenda obviously being the U.S. election and what a Trump presidency could mean in terms of trade barriers uh, with Europe. Now, competition continues to heat up on the uh, already supercharged Chinese electric vehicle market. Mm -hmm. Chinese uh, tech giant Xiaomi says it delivered 20,000 of its new SU SU7 model EVs in October aiming to hit 100,000 by the end of November. Uh, better known for smartphones and home appliances, the company has, chained, has charged into China's EV market. It first announced its plans to start making cars just three years ago, with the first deliveries reaching customers in March. Xiaomi joins a domestic field already crowded with rivals like BYD, Xpeng, and Geely, but its rapid scale-up means it will likely be a significant player. Brian Quinn has more. Throwing down the gauntlet to some of the world's top car makers. Chinese tech giant Xiaomi has unveiled an upgraded version of its SU7 electric vehicle, one it says is faster than rivals from luxury Western brands like Tesla and Porsche. The SU7 Ultra doesn't just look like a Porsche. 
Xiaomi says its prototype broke the record for a four-door car on Germany's iconic Nürburgring track. CEO Lei Jun taking his own victory lap at a company event in Beijing on Tuesday. This is the world's fastest four-door mass-produced car currently available. When people ask why we created such a powerful machine, my answer is simple. We're building a dream car. It's remarkable progress for a company much better known for its smartphones and housewares. Xiaomi only got into the EV business three years ago. It began delivering cars in March and is on track to ship 100,000 units by December, a feat that took Tesla some 12 years to accomplish. It's just one more sign of the booming market for EVs in China. While Tesla's Model Y remains the country's bestseller, homegrown upstarts like BYD, Xpeng, NIO and Geely have largely caught up on quality and now are catching up in sales. Xiaomi's base model SU7 undercut Tesla's entry-level Model 3 by some $4,000 on its launch. The upgraded Ultra, though, marks a different strategy, coming with a sticker price north of $100,000. Brian Crane reporting there. Before that, Shell Pellegrin. Thanks very much, Shell.